Hey, good afternoon, church family. Hope you are well and things are going good where you are. Obviously not where in my usual spot from where I've been recording and also a little bit earlier today, but I come to you from New Mexico, just join a little time away, so with the family. I wanted to continue our thoughts from the book of Ruth. Uh, I'm going to finish up chapter two today. So last week we left Ruth, if you may remember, uh, sent out by her mother-in-law, Naomi, whose name meant pleasant, and she changed her name to bitter uh, because, in her words, uh, she had gone out full and come back empty. In other words, her sojourn to Moab didn't work out the way that she wanted. Her husband and her sons had died, and now she's back at home in Bethlehem with her daughter-in-law, Ruth, without much uh, in regards of power and resources, but... As we mentioned last week, she does have Ruth, who has made an unconditional uh, devotion uh, to her mother-in-law to be with her. And so she went out last week to a field to practice the gleaning laws uh, that we read about in Leviticus 19. And uh, also just the idea that in the Jewish culture, there was an expectation to care for widows. Uh, Exodus 22, for example, and other places. Uh, So uh, she comes across a field of a man by the name of Boaz, uh, who happens to be a relative of Naomi. And Boaz uh, sees Ruth in the field and inquires about her. And then um, uh, apparently Ruth was really attractive. And so Boaz is interested and begins to talk to her, offers her protection, offers uh, her to just glean only in her fields, and also tells his workers Uh, to leave her some of the good stuff. And so the laws of the gleaning, or the gleaning laws in Leviticus, uh, at the edge of the field you were supposed to leave uh, product for those who were poor, uh, those who were downtrodden and outcast. And so Boaz goes a step further uh, and says, no, you don't just get what's on the outside. He uh, instructs his workers to make sure that Ruth had plenty and gives her some of the first harvest of the better grain. So I wanted to pick up in chapter 2 and verse 17, and we'll finish up this chapter today as we uh, think about uh, Ruth and her mother-in-law and now this interesting new character we met last week, Boaz, uh, beginning in verse 17 of chapter 2. So she gleaned in the field until evening, and she beat out what she had gleaned, and it was about uh, an ephah of barley. And she picked it up and came into the town, and her mother-in-law saw how much she had gleaned. Uh, Then she took out and gave her what was left over after she herself had been satisfied. Her mother-in-law said to her, Where did you glean today, and where have you worked? Blessed be the man who took notice of you. She told her mother-in-law with whom she had worked, and said, The name of the man with whom I work today is Boaz. Uh, Then Naomi said to her daughter-in-law, Blessed be he by the Lord, whose kindness is not forsaken the living or the dead. Naomi also said to her, The man is a relative of ours, one of our nearest kin. Uh, Then Ruth the Moabite said, He even said to me, Stay close by my servants until they had finished all my harvest. And Naomi said to Ruth, her daughter-in-law, It is better, my daughter, that you go out with his young women, otherwise you might be bothered in another field. So she stayed close to the young women of Boaz, gleaning to the end of the barley and wheat harvest, and she lived with her mother-in-law. You know, one of the great things about this book and this this account of Ruth uh, is, and one of the great themes is grace. Um, it was uh, through grace that God delivered Naomi and Ruth back to Bethlehem. It was a gracious act of commitment uh, that Ruth committed to her mother-in-law. And now it's a gracious act of Boaz who makes sure that Ruth and Naomi are going to be taken care of. And so as... As uh, she goes and recounts to her mother-in-law what had happened in the fields of Boaz, uh, how she received humbly the grace that was offered to her uh, by Boaz, uh, the conversation gets a little more personal. Who is it? Uh, What'd you do? How'd it go? Uh, Some things to think about, too, as as we think about grace and what it's all about. Uh, You know, uh, I think grace is so misunderstood in our time and how it's applied uh, through our lives. And uh, Ruth 
understood and accepted the conditions of Boaz's grace. It was a it was a favor that he offered her, and I think as he offered her that, she took advantage of it and, and, and freely accepted it. And you know, one of the things about grace and God's grace is freely given. We can't earn it. We don't deserve it. Uh, is to accept it uh, and to accept it without reservation. And that's what Ruth does. She continues to work and she continues to glean. And as she does that, I think what goes on in the story, uh, just in in the new life that comes with the harvest and the sustenance that comes from that and uh, being satisfied that comes through the harvest, I think you begin to see a softening of Naomi's position. Remember, she had wanted to call herself Mara or Bitter. Uh, and now that she sees what's going on with her daughter-in-law and now with Boaz, uh, hope begins to build. Uh, and there is so much power in hope. Uh, and one of the things I think that we forget or we maybe don't think about is just when grace is extended and, and grace is accepted, uh, just how much hope is created in our lives. And it's the power of hope that really changes our outlook on things. And thus, I think, changes us as well. And I do think about in the times that we're living, uh, we need words of hope. Uh, We need, and hope is not just about wishful thinking when it comes with God. It's really about expecting God to be God in powerful ways and working uh, on our behalf. And so hope begins to change, uh, even Naomi. And so as Ruth shares the food with Naomi and shares the conversation with Boaz, I believe that Naomi's disposition begins to change again. Remember, she went from pleasant to bitter, and now bitter to somewhat hopeful and somewhat optimistic that maybe that God really has been actively involved in their lives and that God is at work uh, through this character named Boaz. And so hope opened her eyes to the Word of God. Uh, for Naomi recalled, I believe, God's word con- concerning the Leverite marriage law, the Rev- Leverite care, which then a near relative would then take care of those who were widowed. And if you just uh, want to read that, you can find that in Leviticus 25, beginning in verse 25 through about verse 55, and also in Deuteronomy 25, verses 5 to 10. Uh, so there is a change. Uh, hopelessness bitterness, and now all of a sudden grace is extended uh, through Boaz, and hope begins to come back. And so uh, they begin to, uh, Ruth and Naomi, uh, have hope because of who Boaz was in their in relationship to them. He is a wealthy, well-resourced, near kinsman. There are also their hope uh, begins to build because of what Boaz did. Uh, Naomi reminds us that he showed kindness or favor to Ruth and really took a personal interest in her life, uh, not just you know by duty, by duty or du- being dutifully bound to uh, adhere to the gleaning laws, but really uh, Boaz was genuinely interested in what was going on in Ruth's life, but also in Naomi's life. And so hope builds because of what Boaz did. And I think also that hope builds because of what Boaz said. Uh, He insisted, Boaz does, that Ruth stay nearby. He promised protection. Uh, He promised uh, provision. Uh, He promised to continue to show her kindness and promised stability because she didn't have to go anywhere else uh, to to find this this glean, uh, to practice the gleaning laws. And so if we think about just what's going on in in Ruth chapter 2, Ruth the alien comes to the city of Bethlehem, uh, which which later become the city of David and the birthplace of Jesus, uh, and she finds a home there. Uh, Boaz, who is aware of things that are going on and the reality of the world, takes a very personal interest in people And then Naomi is seen as one uh, who, because of life's difficulty, uh, who really needs to be encouraged, who needs others to step in and convince her and show her through words and actions uh, that that God's still at work and that God's still active and that God's still involved. Ruth lives by faith. 
Ruth re depends on grace. Ruth rejoices in hope. And in doing so, Naomi's disposition begins to change. But also, Boaz begins to fulfill a mission and a call from God. Though it's not explicit in this chapter, uh, it certainly uh, is implicit uh, that God is at work through Boaz uh, to intervene in the lives of these two women who otherwise well, would have had nothing and very little hope. Uh, and I think, church, in our world today, that what we're called to be is, is the children of God. Uh, we're, we're called to be those uh, through our words, uh, through our actions, and through who we are, our character, uh, to offer hope to others and offer hope to the world. And uh, again, this story is absolutely one of my favorite books in the Bible uh, just because of the characters involved. And you see God's hand working through uh, people and places uh, and the the law of, of Moses in this case or God's uh, commands and God's word. God is working in every way uh, to make sure, uh, one, that those who are oppressed, uh, those who are less resource, those who are down and out might really truly experience uh, what God is all about. And so um, I pray that we will be those kind of people uh, that can partner with God uh, in those situations, uh, especially towards those who are having a difficult time, uh, especially in this time of, of our pandemic, uh, those who've lost loved ones, those who've lost income, those who've lost resources. Uh, may we be the people that God's called us to be, uh, to step up in faith and to be gracious, uh, just as Boaz was gracious, and to join God at work. Hope you have a great rest of the week. Uh, we'll be back in town, and we'll hope to see you on Sunday. Uh, stay safe. Uh, stay well. Uh, we love you and miss you.